Hi everybody, welcome back to another Julia at Home curriculum video. Today's focus is Math Mammoth. This is a math curriculum I have been using with my two oldest children for a few years now. They will be in third grade and fifth grade this year and we'll be using those corresponding grade curriculums. Uh, so I get the digital version of Math Mammoth. I'm not sure if there is a printed version you can buy. I will check for you, but I buy it, get the digital copy, and then I print it out. So um, it does, you know, take either, you either have to go get it printed somewhere. I have a printer. I print as much as I can at the beginning of the year using a lot of ink and paper, and it's just what I choose to do, how I choose to do it. Um, but this way, I actually have the digital copies of the curriculum to use for my students going forward. So uh, my son now is doing the third grade curriculum this year that his sister did two years ago. I didn't need to repurchase the curriculum. I just reprinted it for him and bound it for him. So this is a mastery math curriculum. There is spiral and there is mastery. Um, the idea is that mastery focuses on one concept for a while until they've mastered it um, and then moves on to the next one and spiral kind of switches what you're doing uh, each day in a way um, of building on each other with with a frequent review of all of the concepts that you've covered um, i haven't actually tried a spiral curriculum with my children we started off doing kind of my own <laughs> curriculum that i made using uh, charlotte mason math um, especially inspired by the the simply charlotte mason um, materials that they have and then um, combining that with Montessori math and I have a video on how I did that and I did I th I think that was a really good way to, to do um, early level math but I was concerned that we weren't getting to everything that we needed to get to and I want to make sure my kids do have a really solid foundation in math so that they're ready to do those upper level maths when we get to pre-algebra algebra, algebra and onward so I did decide to use this I still do pull in manipulatives to use with it um, more so with the the younger ages less so now with the the now fifth grader um, but I'll pull in, you know, Montessori materials such as such as the golden beads. I'll have my kids do the chains, the square chains and the cubed chains. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, that makes complete sense. It's, there's very specific Montessori materials, but those are for, you know, multiplication. And then I also have, you know, other manipulatives on hand such as buttons and little wood pieces and beads, things like that, that can just easily be used to um, show physically how the concept works. Today I'm going to show you 3A. So each of the grades are split into um, A and B and I do bind them in two separate books. It's just a continuation on. It's just that um, it's really thick. So um, that's actually how it's organized in the digital files. There's two separate files. I printed just what I needed to print as far as the uh, pages that the kids actually do. So I will show you this, but I'm also going to show you on the computer because I do have the digital version, uh, the table of contents. So let me just show you that now. So this here is 3A. You, it has like on the, the cover that you've seen the main, the main uh, concepts we're going to be going through. And here's the table of contents. So we're going to do some addition and subtraction. He's obviously done addition and subtraction already. We're going to be working with tens and um, it looks like three digits a little bit as well and regrouping. Um, multiplication, kind of just like an introduction to multiplication with him. And then the multiplication tables. Um, just as a note, we also practice the multiplication tables separately um that's actually something my husband is in charge of because he enjoys it for some reason um but he'll drill them on multiplication tables so by the end of this year he should know them all and this is where i will also pull in some additional montessori math materials because there are so many that i think really help firm up the understanding of multiplication in a physical way then we have a chapter on telling time and i believe every single grade at least the ones i've done so far i'm not sure about fifth grade do go through telling time and what's covered and you know the detail is increased each time um, and then money, money also comes up mo in most of the uh, grade levels. And again, the difficulty increases each time. Um, so, yep, that's the, that's what we're covering this book. It does have a foreword. Um, and each chapter has an introduction with, um, 
you know, really for the parent or teacher to know what is going to be taught in this lesson. And it also gives you um, additional additional resources. There's a QR code in there that you can go to and like extra things you can do to practice. Um, and I haven't really felt the need to use them, but I do like having that option there. So again, that's at the beginning of each chapter. Um, and I don't print that out because again, I'm printing a lot and I'm just trying to get the kids pages in there, but I do have the digital version so I can come back and look at this if I want to. I'm also gonna show you the table of contents for 3B so you can get an idea of what else he'll be covering this year. So it's gonna do, we're gonna do place value with thousands, geometry, um, again, most of them come back to these same kind of themes each time. So it's building on things before. So in geometry this year, he'll be talking about perimeter and doing some problems with perimeter and area, um, and also looking at solids. Um, measuring, he'll be talking about centimeters and millimeters, um, pounds, ounces, so like measuring weight, measuring like distance. Uh, division, we're going to be like introducing division as well as fractions. So that is what is going to be covered. And again, same concept, each chapter has an introduction. Okay, here we are with 3A work text. I do laminate the cover and the back pages because I think it makes it hold up better. So um, skipping the introduction, because again, I don't print more than I need to. We are starting here with some mental addition, and usually the first chapter here is kind of a review from what they've done in the past. Um, and each, so lessons are different lengths, and you can kind of just tell where a lesson starts by the bold title there, um, but they're not numbered or anything. And so I usually try to assign about a lesson a day. And so this one is three pages, which I feel like feels like average. And I can tell because often they'll have a puzzle corner at the end of a lesson. I don't know if every lesson does, but most of them do. Um, and these can be kind of tricky. And this is often what will help them with at some point. So again, this one's three pages. Um, they really can range from like two to four for the most part. Um, there might be the occasional one that's a little longer, but if so, it'll be more of like, this is stuff for them to read. They're not doing this work. This is a demonstration and explanation. And then they'll, they'll do the problems here. Um, so often when the lessons are longer, it's because there's more chunks that are just um, reading, I guess. I think when I got to this part, I was just I was just running low in ink in this part, but it should all be perfectly legible. Grouping and addition. So when there's these pictures here like this, I also find that that's a great time to use my Montessori golden beads because I have uh, 10 bars and units as well as um, 100 squares and thousands cubes. So. Um, I pull out the appropriate things and have them actually do it using physical items, just at least the first couple problems, so that I know that they have like a, a really good grasp of the concept. Now there are some extras that come digitally that I didn't print out as well. So there's answer keys that you can use as a parent. Um, my husband, I haven't really used those in the past. Um, maybe we should to, to lighten our mental load, but we generally, one of us goes through and just checks the work. Um, Cause we're still at the level of math where that's, that's totally doable. When, once we get a little higher levels, I'm more likely to use the, uh, the answer keys. Um, there's also tests for each chapter, um, and I believe they're cumulative tests um, for the most part. Um, so I like that. I'm, I've used them a little bit in the past, not regularly, but I think I might try to use them a little bit more regularly this year. Uh, just to have them practice taking tests, to be honest. 
Okay, so at the end of each chapter, there's a chapter review which will focus on the concepts learned in this specific chapter. So this chapter, this first chapter in general, is generally a review of what what they've done in the past. Um, but it's still, so it, it's kind of a, a mix of things here. Um, and then this is starting chapter two, which makes sense because we've only done one chapter so far. But once we get to the end of chapter two, which is multiplying, see it, it does things, let me, let me hang on one second. Let me finish a thought before I come to that. Um, but at the end of most chapters, you'll have a review for that chapter. And then you'll have, oh shoot, it's not in this one either. All right, well often there's also a cumulative review. Here we go. There's often a mixed review as well. That's, um, you know, mixed from all the previous chapters that they've done so that they're reviewing some of that. And there's also extra practice sheets or extra review sheets um, that I have in the digital file. So if I can, if I see that there's something that we're reviewing in this mixed review that they're not retaining, I can go back and have them do more practice on that. I haven't really felt the need to though. Let me, let me come back here, talk about something else. So you can see with multiplication and, and most things, but especially things like multiplication, they're going to address it from several, uh, they're just, they're going to teach them to do it in several different ways. Um, so here they're, you know, grouping things, showing them as different groups. Here we're using a number line and jumping. So different students might have different things that help help the concept click in their brain. And so they're utilizing all these different concepts. I think it also just gives them a fuller idea of what, what this is and what's going on. Um, there's a lot of word problems throughout, um, and I... I I enjoy that. I like word problems myself. Um, I find it makes math uh, more practical, I guess. You can see where you would use this. Tables here. to this is the chapter going through all the different tables so in this one I would probably use utilize some more extra materials as I noted as we were going through the table of contents So here you're filling in parts of the multiplication table and they do that several times. Here's our mixed review and then our review. They're going to fill in the whole table. This is a mystery number. It's kind of like a puzzle corner. All right, then you, so they have done, so like in level, in the second grade level, he has done some reading the clock. I believe they start in the first grade level. And um, so he's, he's reviewing here some of the things he's learned before, and then they're gonna add on more. So you can see there it was a review and then they're adding on more about half and quarter hours. They're reviewing till and past. And now they're doing some math, actually, like equations with it. So they have to calculate how many minutes passed here. And there's some word problems. So I, I have to say, I'm just, I've been very pleased with this curriculum. We went ahead and started using this, um, I think when my daughter was in second grade, I'm not 100% sure. And we've just been using it ever since. So I haven't tried out a bunch of different math curriculums. I know a lot of homeschool families have. Um, now, do they always want to do this? Are they always excited to do it? No. Um, my daughter especially does not love doing math, but I'm not sure that there is a curriculum that would actually make her excited about it. She's just, just not her favorite subject. So um, we just get through it and uh, she can do math. So <laughs> that's, that's what's important to me. She understands the concepts. Um, she knows all of her multiplication tables at this point. Again, she's in fifth grade and this is the third grade book. So she's done all of these. Um, yeah, so 
that is the goal. And then the mixed review for chapter five and the review for chapter five. Again, I was running a little low on ink, but it's still totally, you can see what's happening there. So there we go. And um, I laminate a back page for them because it makes it a little more sturdy. And I usually choose their favorite colors and my son's favorites are black and red. So I think I did this one black and the other one red. My daughters are pink. I hope that gives you a good sense of the Math Mammoth curriculum to see if it's a good fit for your family. Again, we've been using it for years. If you look at some of my past Day in the Life videos, you can see it in use. So I will link to one of those here so you can check that out. This is part of my curriculum series for the year 2023 to 2024. So if you've missed some of those in the series, I will put the playlist here. I have covered what individual subjects my fifth and third grader are doing as well as our family subjects in a separate video. So go check all those out. I'm going to be continuing this series for a while as we go in depth in a few more curriculums as well as my plan for preschool. So stay tuned. If you want to make sure you're getting my videos, please subscribe and also click the notification bell so you will be alerted when a new video is published. Until next time, I hope you all stay safe and well. Bye friends.